Hi everybody, welcome. Thanks for coming back. Today's guest I'm very excited to speak to because I've only ever really spoken to her for a few minutes at a time at, at parties or she's, she's come on Would I Lie To You? So we met then. We run into each other around town but this will be our first proper conversation and she is a marvellous conversationalist. She does so many things. I'm not going to insult her by listing them. It's Faye Ripley. There she is. I can see you. I was painting my nails. Were you? <laughs> just... What are the chances of that? I was doing the same. <laughs> I bet you were having someone do yours, though. Yes, and they're still <laughs> down there now. How lovely. Look at you in, in your boudoir. This is undoubtedly going, unless something terrible happens, it is going to be the longest conversation we've ever had. Correct. Do you remember any of our conversations? Not with any detail, which is why I'm so looking forward <laughs> Well, let, let's start by observing your rather professional setup, rather like mine, because like me, you're no stranger to the voiceover booth. Let's take this blooming shield off, guys. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're too much of a pro to need that. Did you do voice work before you made it big, or did you do voice work as a result of making it big? First of all, I'm not sure I've made it big. I knew you were going to come, come on in now. with some. I knew you were going to come in with some self-deprecation there. I thought, here we go. There's no need. Others do this for me. Okay. <laughs> I was on a set last week. It was a small independent film. When I arrived, I was sitting on in the allotment that we were filming in. I also had to get undressed in the allotment and go to the toilet in the allotment because there wasn't any facilities. But anyway. Um, and the lady that chose to chat to me, she started the conversation with, so are you semi-retired now? <laughs> so she, she knew who you were. She knew that you were Faye Ripley from all the things that she knows you for. And she thought you were semi-retired. I mean, I'm not sure what semi-retired means. Oh, to me, it says struggling for work. That's how I interpret it. Uh, very much how I interpreted it, actually. <laughs> anyway, Rob, are you? I'm sorry that I don't know this. Are you a sir? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, a genuine question. Uh, Faye, I'm going to give you a very genuine answer. No, I'm not. <laughs> ah. D at some point, you may be, because frankly, most of you lot are. So, um, oh, hang on a minute. Who's you lot? Who are you lumping me in with here? Seems like everyone. Seems like uh, everyone. I'm quite uh, open about wanting an OBE, frankly. Um, but um, anyway, I'm sure it will come to you. My question to you is, when, not if, Rob, yeah. you are, will you expect that on a set? Will you want to be called that? Well, look, Faye, I've, I've not given too much thought to this. <laughs> Yes. But I think on my headed notepaper it would say Sir Robert, and I'd go Robert because I think that sounds better than Sir Rob. Yeah. It would be Sir Robert Bryden. And on set, no, please just call me Rob. But if I arrived and my, and you know, on those director's chairs we sit on with our names on them, if it wasn't on that, I would kick off. <laughs> sure. I tell you what we have in common um, is. The, the the whole drama school thing, you went to drama school, but you tried, you had to audition, is this true, three times to get into Guildhall? I did. And actually, when I finally got in, I, I couldn't believe I'd finally got in. Because, yes, three years when you're 18 and, you know, 19, 20, 21, it's a long time. That feels like a lifetime. You're just focused on mm. one thing, getting into drama school. And eventually I got into Guildhall and I turned up on the first day and what happened was that each of the main tutors would sort of congratulate the, somebody when they walked in and go, uh, you, you got my vote, you're oh, the one that I got yeah. in. It was a sort of ego boost for the teachers and everybody, some, some teacher or other would say, oh, you know, I backed you, you're why you got in. And the head of the school Tony Church and he's long passed away but he was an elderly gentleman and he marched towards me and said I got you in and I'm so glad that I did Alan 
He thought what? I was a boy. I had very, very short hair and used to wear suits. It was my thing. That is a like, horrific occurrence. How did you recover from that? I grew my hair. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. What did you do in between? So it took you three years. What mm. were you doing uh, while you were still trying to get in? I did every awful job that was available to anyone. I was a clown for a start. Um, so I was a kid's entertainer for a, a long time. Um, <laughs> but I also sold shirts, door to door, cold call. Door, door to door? Door to door with a bag. How the hell does that work? Well, what you used to have to do is pick up your stock of shirts, men's shirts, and then they would send you to a high street because you just go into the shops and say, does anybody want to buy a shirt? And you'd, So you're sending it to the shopkeepers, as it were. You were able to walk in cold. Yeah. They haven't asked to see you. No. And you, you must have been good then. I mean, I was pretty good. I'm, I'm good. Retail is is my I'd say I'm not even semi-retired in retail I'm just I'm, I'm like at my peak something I wasn't aware of until I did extensive research I saw in in your notes Frankenstein Kenneth Branagh now I've done a play with Ken and he's been on this series I I think of him as a friend and I thought well we can have a lovely chat about Ken and of course Frankenstein star De Niro sure. then I read a little deeper and and it, it wasn't an entirely agreeable experience for you. You're bringing up this because, of course, I did film. I was cast. I did spend some time with Kenneth. So you Kenneth, got the job, and that's the best part of any gig is not doing it, is getting it. So you, you experienced that. Yeah, I did. I mean, it was not a large role, Rob, because it was Prostitute 3, Prostitute three. Yes, right. because okay. Frankenstein took a few of the ladies of the night and strangled them and killed them. That was part of the story. Um, so I suppose I could always have guessed that Prostitute three may not have made the final cut, which is, mm. of course, what happened. So I uh. bought my dress for the premiere and Sir Kenneth Branagh is a very nice man to work for and so he stayed in contact with me and was sort of well done for your work it's great can't wait to see it at the premiere unfortunately two days before the premiere or whatever it was he sent me a little handwritten note which I still have I have to say saying please do come but if you do don't expect to see yourself in it Oh, bless him. He's a good man. He didn't have to do that. That's, he didn't have to do that. It was so kind that yeah. I was never bitter about it. And also, I think I might have been on the poster. Wow, so you were on the poster, but not in the film. And De Niro <laughs> wasn't on the poster because it was the shadow of him on yeah. me, if you see what I mean. It was just a weird old thing. Did you work with him? Did you get to film with him? I did. I, I filmed two scenes um, and one was with Kenneth Branagh and De Niro and I was Good dead God. on the slab because I'd been killed. <laughs> okay. He'd killed me, but the stuntman had killed me. It was just the stuntman's hand. Oh, no. But then I got to be with them and they did their scene over my body yeah. and De Niro, I swear to God I wasn't dreaming this, turned to me at the end as they cut and said, hey, Faye, what do you think of that? How was that? And he asked me for a note. Now, possibly the reason I was cut, because I gave him a note. <laughs> You're not serious. I think I, I have some memory of saying something about perhaps he should speak up a bit. <laughs> You're not. No, this is a joke, surely. This isn't a joke. I, did, I didn't say nothing, which is what I should have said, or just, that was really great. If that had been me, I'd have just gone, oh, <laughs> thought you really good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I should definitely have done that. I thought you were great in Goodfellas as well. <laughs> and, and I think in the future you'll be really good in Meet the Fockers. Uh, <laughs> and another thing I noticed, another thing where you and I almost overlap, was in, we were both in, towards the end of his life, Dennis Potter's last pieces of work. Oh. He did He did a thing called Cold Lazarus, mm. which I am in, ever so briefly. And you were in karaoke, were you not? Ever so briefly. 
ever so briefly. What did you play in karaoke? Because it was a thrill to be cast in a Dennis Potter piece. Again, I was a prostitute. That was the 20s. That was my 20s. I wasn't a prostitute, but I was a pretend prostitute for many things. I think at that time, all the sort of lead parts were very English rose, blonde hair, freckly face. I had dark hair. I'm now dyeing my hair blonde in an attempt to get work, frankly. Um, and I had dark hair um, and big knockers. Are you talking about your critics, Faye? I mean, they, they, <laughs> oh, I do hate it when they criticise us. And what were they saying about Knock you? me down. Oh. I, I don't know. I always had to be the, the, the one that broke up a marriage. <laughs> anyway, on that Dennis Potter thing this was a slightly scarring for me because I went mm. on it and I was it was a big deal to be in one of those absolutely amazing yeah. and I remember we were filming in my bordello I think I was the head of the in the bar it was I had my girls what do you call that the madame there we are it was the madame I had a scene with Albert Finney oh I was really really nervous and I sort of had sort of made some acting choices that were quite big and I thought rather good. And um, Albert Finney perhaps didn't think they were so good because as we went on, as they said, action, and so we had to walk through a door into my bar thing, um, he just said to me, less is more, Faye, less is more. And we were on the walk into the scene and in that moment, I had to make a decision. Do I go with Albert Finney, the most amazing actor's note, or do I just go bigger still? Now, Rob, what do you think I went for? I have a horrible feeling you went bigger still. That's right, Rob. Why, Faye? Why? Please tell me you didn't give him notes as well, like you did with De Niro. I didn't. Right. I think I did that thing of going... I know what I'm doing and it's too late to change and I'm going to do it anyway. And then went to the ladies' toilet and cried. I think that's what I did. Because that's what actors, you know what I mean? Yeah. We're all putting on a front. Of course, so I pretended to big it up and be like, come on, I know what I'm doing. Don't you find the, the, the whole business as you get older, the thing that becomes stranger and stranger, is the arriving on location early in the morning, being bustled into your trailer, your clothes are all there waiting for you. And if you want anything, they'll bring it to you. I mean, very lovely in many ways, but also quite infantilizing in other ways. <laughs> that, that's the thing I find as a father of five. I've often found it's a big adjustment when I go back to that world, the sitting around. And you, when you're sitting around on set, I end up having the most facile conversations and the most nonsense stuff. Nonsense. Yeah. Absolute nonsense, I agree. Some people th sort of really love it. and they, they I find it too passive. That's why I like doing other jobs. One of yes, the reasons I write yes. is because I'm in charge of my own destiny at yes. that point. And if it's rubbish, it's rubbish, that's fine. So I think the passiveness of acting, I can do it and I yeah. that's fine. But I can only do so much of it until mm. I, I'm a bossy boots, essentially. And I like, like control over mm. things. And yeah. that's why I like staying home with my children until now, because I could control them. Now, not so much, guys. So now, now you must be actively looking for things to get you out of the house. Then it, it must, it must have changed. What, what is it that mm. you want to do now? Do you have any, you know, particular things, areas you want to move into, or is it, as it is for so many, more of the same? Please. Uh, well, one of the things I wanted to do was a podcast. Well, I'm now doing it. Not yours, right. my own. No, no. Okay, and tell us about yours then so, so that you can, you can take my listeners away. My podcast is coming out in January, but that was something I really wanted to do. So we just sort of made that happen. That's um, a podcast with David Baddiel and myself. We're doing a, a, a consumer comedy podcast, my friend. Well, if you are... You don't like the passivity of acting. One of the things I've enjoyed about this is is just that, is that you feel, even hosting Would I Lie to You feels not as passive as being an actor because yes. you rock up, it all happens a bit quicker. 
and I like that. It makes you feel as if you have a bit more control over your life. Uh, this certainly does that. So I think you'll enjoy that aspect of it. I, I agree. I'm liking that I am my own editor. Faye Ripley, this has been rather delightful. Thank you for doing it. We've gone from zero to 100 in terms of our conversations because this has been almost an hour. Has it? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's felt like it's... two. You see my face when you watch this bike. You see my face forms ready to receive a compliment and then comes crashing down. All right, <laughs> really nice to talk to you. Thank you, Faye. And, Thanks for um, having me, Rob. All the very, very best with everything that you do. I'll see you on the voiceover circuit, my friend. You will see in store for details. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.